Good morning. Well, my little Chewie and I are on our walk this morning. I thought I would take you through the Enchanted Elf Forest. So we have a little sign here at the beginning that says, you are now entering Enchanted Elf Village. They are shy folk and wish not to be disturbed. So pass through quietly and see how many cottages you can spot. So we're, that's what we're gonna do. We will pass through quietly. Let's be on our way. Oh, there's one way here. Almost missed that. This is one of our little walks that Chewie and I go on regularly. Listen to the birds. Lots of raspberries. There's a lovely cottage right there. door we'd never see it. Fern, 
We've had some rain in the past couple of days, nothing too serious. It's turning everything a lush green. Oh, there's a big house. And there's the, this is the other entrance to the little elf village. And there you go. A little five minute insert of our walk today. It's the Canada Day long weekend, so it's getting pretty busy here. I don't think that uh, I'm going to be videoing out here too much. Everybody brings their families out, and there's all these extra people. So, yeah. I'll catch up with you in the next clip. Bye for now. Hi guys, I just wanted to update you on the sock situation. I'm still out here in Pinawa and there is a thunderstorm coming, I think, but right now we've got sunshine. So I wanted to let you know that I finished Walter's other sock. To see, these are just vanilla latte shorties that I made for Walter. They're huge, they're size 13. Of course, this is a medium uh, sock blocker, but uh, he could use probably an extra large sock blocker because there's lots of room here left in the toe and in the heel but that's okay that's all I've got out to show you on these so there's two so now I can enter these oh the sun's going behind a cloud so that's uh going to be entered into the Denise Deer's from Denise Deer's Designs the year of the socks plus any other uh hashtags that I'm going to follow and I so I had left that is in the comfort sock and wool and I have 29 grams left, so that's enough to, I don't know, do some more heels, toes, and cuffs. Make a little uh, 20 gram uh, mini out of it. So yeah, so that is that. So now I've got one fit FO for you to show Yeah, I'll put that away. Those are going to go home. I got to block them, wash and block them. So I also have a HO, half finished object, because I have one one of my swiss dot socks done by nancy wheeler isn't that cool i love the way those dots came out and i'll put it on a, the sock blocker for you to show you I'm not sure if i had finished it the last time i spoke to you but there we go there it is i'm so happy with these i love these this is my second pair i'm working on and on the second one i am on the heel flop so that's that. So I'm getting there on that one. So I'll have that one finished. And this is in the wool I got from Diane. I think I told, explained to you in the last video. The Fave Socks by Easy Knit Trico Knits from Mary Maxim. So that's those. And I've got a little bit further on both of my vanilla socks I'm doing with the Christmas colorways from West Yorkshire, West Yorkshire Spinners from the Fairy Light Sparkle and the Gingerbread colorways. I'm making two pairs of socks on 2.75 needles with 60 inch, 60 inch, 60 stitch uh, per sock. And this is, I've got the heel heels done. I'm doing a shadow wrap heel just like I I did on my on Walter's minis or mi shorties so I've got that one there I've got almost on the whole foot on that one and I'm using the light bulb markers just like Kay from uh, uh, Crazy Sock Lady does and on the fairy lights one not quite as far but I've got the heel in on the first one and these are going to be for hashtag Christmas in July make along 2023 by Dana Ray makes so there we go. And these are going to be gifts. I have decided I won't be keeping them. I'm going to use them as gifts. That's why I did them with a little bit with uh, 2.75 needles and 60 stitches. Because the ladies that I'm giving them to, I don't know quite how large their feet are uh, width ways. So if um, with that 2.75, it gives it just a little bit more stretch. And with the 60 stitches, it still gives a nice cuff. Okay, so those that's how far I am along on my socks. So yeah, I wanted to share that with you. 
also, I'm going to be putting in uh, maybe two or three little uh, videos that are the tips and tricks that I have for doing cross stitching. I'm not a floss tuber by any means. I'm not a professional. I have been cross stitching for many years and I've been picking up a few tips and tricks along the way. And you folks might already know about these tips and tricks, but you know what? I thought I would share them with you anyways and put it in as we're going along. So I will be putting them in because I have started working on the Sunlit Fox in Counted Cross Stitch. My daughter Cheryl gave me this for Christmas a few years back and I thought I would get going on it. I started it last year and did a little tiny bit of the first square. This is a 14 count Ada. It's on black, but I'll show you in a second. I switched it to cream or beige and it's designed by Joni Johnson Godsey. So yeah, so it's going to be a 14 by 11 inch. And yeah, so I'm, I'll show you how far I am or I'm on. I've gotten on this. And you can see, I haven't gotten very far, but this is going to be his tail. This is the tail from the picture here. See the tail there? So this is the bottom right corner. It's a huge pattern, guys. It's just a huge pattern. So on paper, I'm not going to show you because it is a paid kit. Came in a kit. And this is his tail here so far. So yeah, so I will insert that little tips and trick video for you now. And it's the first one of this little series that I'm going to add in for the vlog. Okay, we'll see you in the next clip. Bye now. Hello. Just thought I would share some tips that I have used for years when doing cross stitching. Now. I am not a floss tuber by any means, and I definitely am not a professional cross stitcher, but I have done quite a few cross stitches over the years, packages, um, done some by book, I've done some by kit, and this here is a kit of a beautiful fox by Dimensions that my daughter gave me for Christmas, and she also, um, from a... Uh, uh, Etsy shop that actually I believe is from Ukraine or from Russia and got me this lovely uh, needle mind or not needle minder um, floss holder as well as a needle minder that was the same but I lost the needle minder and she gave me this lovely uh, guide now this is just a little guide that goes on your pattern as you're working and again it is magnetic as well as the as well as uh, the uh, needle minder. So the needle minder fell off. It was a little fo wooden fox as well. So I just went ahead and, uh, you know, just used it as it was. And I have no idea where the little fox went. I will find it one day. So a couple of the tips that I wanted to share with you. If you are using a grime guard, which I made this one out of just some fabric kicking around, I put the word top at on one end, one side of it. So that I know that when I pick this up, this is the direction I'm working. And I know you might think, oh my gosh, you, how could she not know? You know what? This is a real intense picture. And yes, in the beginning, I was getting all turned around. Another tip, what I do is I sew through a different contrasting color of just thread, doing the 10 by 10 squares to match the pattern. This helps so that I know where I am in the actual grid as I'm working along as well. I also like to keep on hand different uh, pens or um, uh, highlighters. And each day I try to use a different color each time I pick up my cross stitching. And I actually mark it off as I go. But I like to use the ones that are um, uh, felt highlighters or some of the gel highlighters so that you can still see the the uh, the guide underneath and then uh, you know in case you make a mistake you can go back and fix it so this is actually a very very large pattern so it's going to take me quite some time to get it done I did a couple of wolves I'll insert a picture of the wolves that I did 
that Walter's mother actually gave me for Christmas one year. It turned out absolutely magnificent. And it was done on black canvas. And yes, I was working back then. And uh, I used to do it on my lunch hour in an atrium that was full of sunlight. So yeah, it was definitely um, hard to do on the black canvas. And this, as you can see, came on black canvas as well. So I just went into the hobby store and picked up this Ecru kind of an oatmeal-y colored canvas to do this one on. Uh, I thought it would look nice um, to set it off, uh, set off the autumn-y colors on it. And the last tip I was going to show you for this section is that I like to keep on hand a little pair of these because, um, you know, I wear glasses, but I actually put these, slip these on underneath my glasses. So I'm looking through both. And that is very, very, very helpful. And of course, keep yourself a little pair of scissors on hand. And yeah, that's it for this section. Next time, I'm going to give you a couple of tips on what I do with thread, with the thread while I'm working through my cross stitch. Okay, that's it for now. Thanks for watching. Hi guys, as you can see, I'm home in Winnipeg again. We're back home for a couple days after the long weekend and uh, doing laundry and grocery shopping and what have you. And then we'll be heading back out tomorrow night. So, or Tuesday night actually. So that'll be tonight for you guys. I uh, just wanted to wrap things up here, give you a little quick update on the knitting and find out if you liked the um, tips and tricks for the uh, for cross stitching we just watched. And if you didn't watch it, well then whatever. I mean, if you're not a cross stitcher, so be it. That's fine, you do you. I just thought I'd throw that in and I've done another little quick clip for next week's podcast or vlog, summertime vlog with a little bit of crafting. So I uh, just want, oh, I'm wearing my Vincus by Barocco and this was a free pattern and by Barocco and I did it in uh, Hayfield Bonus DK from the UK I got. I got Spearmint and I did them on, I did it on a four millimeter needle and I just loved making this one. I did the back the same as the front like you're supposed to do with all the different patterning so I did uh, do the both do it exactly like the pattern called for and it was lots of fun and I would do it again I, except I wasn't really fond of the uh, moss stitch diagonal moss stitch can you see that man that was tough to do I ran I was forever making mistakes thank goodness I wasn't making it in black so I just wanted to update you I uh with my uh, co with my Kofi or coffee coffee donation that I received uh, a couple weeks ago, I bought myself something for uh, my crafting because I didn't have a little one. Is a little mini uh, scale. It is so cool and uh, it shows the pieces. Well, I don't know what tar means or tear the units, and it has a light that you turns on and off, and it has a nice smooth panel here, and it closes up so that it doesn't you know, take any punishment or beating in your uh, notions pouch. Of course, I'm pretty sure I know what else this could be used for other than jewelry and uh, crafting. But uh, yeah, so it's uh, pretty neat. Uh, I've been getting cannabis notices now or something. It's like, okay, no, 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 we're knitting, knitting. So it will, you could put your little ball of yarn on here. I saw this actually on Linda's Designs podcast she has one and so I, I put it on my 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 wish list for for uh, Amazon and it holds a nice little ball of wool and you have to make sure you leave it on a flat surface and make sure it's not a squishy flat surface just a table or even the floor and then you can go ahead and weigh and it does weigh to like 0. 0.0000 of a gram so it's uh, pretty neat it actually came with the batteries too which was very impressive so yeah, this was my purchase that I got with my coffee money. Thank you so much to the donator. And uh, yeah, my Kofi links down below. I am going to be saving up um, for a, uh, a vlogging camera for to take with me to the trailer so that I can uh, get better, you know, walking videos for you guys without making everybody, you know, get vertigo. So yeah, and I also finished a couple of things. Just wanted to fill you in or update you on my Swiss dot socks, shorties, my Swiss dot shorties. I'm almost down to the toe now. I've only got two more sets of the pattern repeat to do, and then I'll be doing the toes. But this is the best, guys. This is, I don't know why I'm blowing out so much here. I guess because we got sunlight down here coming through that big window. 
Oh, I finished. I got a hoe. The half finished object. I got one sock done. Okay, and this is in that uh, West Yorkshire Spinners. I think I told you already earlier in the video, but it's very light sparkle in case I didn't. This is from Stash. So I am busting through my stash. And I got this well before Christmas, and I was going to make it for Christmas, but I ended up making it for this Christmas. So I made one vanilla sock. Now, for these ones, I'm doing them on a 2.75 uh, needle. I think I already told you this all, too, just earlier. And if I did, sorry, <laughs> I'm going to repeat myself quickly. And I did a 62-inch um, cast on, some about uh, 15 rows of, no, actually 12 rows of 2x2 two two rib. And then I do a bunch of plain stockinette for down to a heel. I, the heel I do is a shadow wrap heel by Earth Tones Girl. And then I did a bunch of, again, vanilla knitting. And then I do a kind of a wedge toe that goes down to eight stitches on each needle. And then I do an inside out uh, kitchener stitch, which is so much easier than a kitchener stitch. So yeah, I do that. And that inside out kitchener stitch, I actually have a tutorial for it in my um, uh, free knitting tips and tricks and tutorials uh, listing. Uh, not listing, what do you call that? Hmm, I don't know. You'll, you, if I remember, I'll put it on the screen. But anyways, I'll, if, or I'll put the link either up here or in the notes below. I use uh, little bulb stitch markers to count my rows so that I'd match my socks perfectly. And I have started the second one. So I'm gonna make it match, guys, because I'm a matchy matchy person. So that's one gift for Christmas that I got half done. And I have the gingerbread one by West Yorkshire Spinners done the second, or the first sock of that one too. And it's exactly the same pattern that I'm using. This is my go-to standard vanilla pattern, but this time I'm doing it on a little bit larger needle and with two less stitches, and it will leave it a little more give, a little more positive ease. It won't, they won't be quite so tight. So yeah, so that's it. My shadow wrap heel, oh, same thing. I was here, I think, on both of them pretty much the last time I showed you. I was right around here on each one. And now I'm finished the one sock each. They're not washed or blocked. I just put them on my, my little uh, sock blockers, which I just to take a picture and then I'll uh, put them back into my bag here. So, okay. Um, oh, and I also, if I get a chance before I leave, I cut out some material that I am going to use to line, make a bag, make a pouch actually, that'll fit inside this pouch that I made. Oh, you notice know, same, it's the same wall, my leftover wool. Way, good way to use up scraps. And I, so I'm gonna use this, I'm gonna make a little pouch to go inside, just like that. And I'll sew, sew the, by hand I will sew the uh, crochet bag to the actual pouch. And I found a zipper in my stash of stuff. Where'd my zipper go? Found this old zipper in my stash of stuff. I'm, I'm a firm believer that if you, if you're throwing out um, bags or tote bags or backpacks or what have you, put the grab on the zippers and stuff if they're still in good working shape because you can always reuse them on other projects. So yeah, this is a nice little zipper. It's even got a nice uh, zipper pull on it. So I thought that would be nice for this because it's kind of got a brown, brown zipper pull. And I wasn't quite sure what I was gonna do with, I found these for the clips. These are pretty old, 380. I don't know how, mind you, no, I might have, no, I didn't buy these. And these clips here for the strap, but it is rather large. I have smaller ones, but then they're too small. So I wasn't quite sure. Here's some um, kind of like the buckles that you use for the, for the bags as well, for the straps as well. So I found those, but I also found a beautiful buckle that's a beautiful little white flower it's a plastic and this was in with my you know bag of goodies that I've collected over the years so I wasn't sure I might use that and then find a way to make it sturdy to you know hold the thing as well as I found this which is an old buckle that I took off of a pair out of off of a an old belt that was pretty shot and I thought, well, this might work too, see? So I could use the buckle. 
and figure out a way to um, put the other end onto here and then have the buckle. I think, I think that's going to be my go-to. I think I like that. That's pretty cool. It's a way to use up another kind of gadget or haberdashery type thing. Yeah, so collect up all those little bits and pieces, throw them in a little shoebox or whatever, mark the shoebox fasteners or clips or buckles. And yeah, you never know when you can, you can end up using them up in your crafting. I even saw this and I was looking for a way I could, you know, maybe put this on it. It's a, um, it's the outside of a pocket and see, there's nothing on this side. So when you sew it onto the pouch, you can actually you sew the top and you sew the sides and then you can have like a little pouch inside or outside. And I thought that would be kind of nice to keep my phone in to put in here. See, so I could like put that in like that. And then it would have like a little padded bag on the inside or pocket on the inside. So anyway, so that's, that's an option. But so far we got to get this pouch made, get it inserted with the zipper on it. And we'll take it a little one step at a time. I'm not sure if I'll get that done this time when I'm in town, but uh, yeah. We'll see. Maybe I'll take that out with me. I've got my old sewing machine out there at the trailer because I am working on uh, a cover for our gazebo. So I'm going to sew that all up and then, uh, yeah, maybe I'll get that all done. <clears throat> I also have another thing to share with you. I'm going to wait until next week uh, when I'm out at the trailer. And it's kind of a neat little story I've got for you that uh, I'll be sharing with you um, about uh, some works and projects progress that aren't mine that I'm going to help with finishing. So I'll share that with you next week. Thanks again to everyone for coming and stopping by and giving me a like and a subscribe and um, leave me a comment if there's anything you'd like to see uh, out here in or out in Pinawa. If uh, there's anything that tickles your fancy, let me know and uh, I'll see if I can't get some video of it. Other than that, I'd like you to have a terrific week. And we will see you next week. Have a good day. Take care. Bye now.